I was contacted by TNZ, uh, which I want to say is a Taiwanese company. Uh, I worked with them in the past, I reviewed another pen for them. They launched a new pen, they asked me if I wanted to review it. And I said yes, and it's quite interesting because this is a pen that has Radin. Uh, I, I have been corrected once, I think it might be Radin, um, but let me know, please, again, because I forget. Uh, it has this shiny stuff on it, abalone shell, which is laid into the pen. It's a very difficult process. Now, what's fascinating about that is that typical Radin pens, $1,500, $2,000, this one is $300. I know $300 is not cheap. But for a rotten pen, that's pretty cheap. So rotten Rushi, it's kind of nice. Um, we should talk about this. So I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But first of all, a very kind thank you to Tianzi for sending me this pen. Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about this Tianzi Rushi rotten pen. It says pen and friend. Wooden box, beautiful little box you get, very, very nice and refined. Uh, and the, the accoutrements are quite nice as well. You get this, this pen kimono, which is nice and pretty soft on the inside. I like how this is done. Um, looks cool, again, looks refined. This is the kind of stuff you get with Nakaya pens, for example. Notice a little bit of, it's not really texture, but the way it looks textured, nice it doesn't look cheap right so i really like that uh, beyond that you get this sort of frilly stuff and you get a little pen condom and that's that's pretty much it let's look at the actual pen and let's start by looking at that pen right next to a pilot metro policy it's a nice size pen not too big not too small i think this is a size that works well for a lot of people um yeah, good size. I don't know what else to say about it. It's a good size. Let's talk about the different parts of this pen. For now, the Tianzi pen, um, I found a price of 300 US on penrealm.com. You can choose between flowers and planets. I'm not quite sure the planets is released yet because I've only seen the flowers. This is the flowers, like these are flowers, right? Um, fine steel nib, that's the only option I could find. It is number six. Uh, plastic feed, a converter is included, you get that wooden box, and it does list this as made in China. Looks pretty refined to me though. So let's look at the parts of this pen. On top, it's just a flat top, uh, we get the nice little clip. These look a lot like the clips Leonardo uh, uses uh, with the little little wheel. It's, it's fairly stiff, but the wheel works very well. Uh, I like the size, I'm just putting the clip near the bottom, I like the, sorry, not size, but shape of the cap quite a lot. A little bulbous, but not too much. And same thing with the barrel. Uh, little bulbous and then it tapers down. The pen, or the cap I should say, unscrews, then you have a nice section, flares out a bit near the end. You have some threads, which are a little sharp, but the section is big enough for me that I don't feel them as I hold the pen. And if you want to, you can more or less post it. Always be careful, it's a lacquered pen, right? So that, that you don't want to scratch the end, I think. Sorry, the end of the barrel. I think this is probably big enough for a lot of people to use unposted. I can stretch out my fingers and it, I still have enough pen to make it work. The nib is marked TNZ, F for fine. Has a nice little logo, with some scroll work on it. As I said, I think this is the only nib grade you can get right now. And then we have a nice sort of flat feed, but it is plastic and not ebonite, for example. Barrel unscrews, and then we have this nice little uh, cartridge converter that was supplied with the pen. Uh, and that is pretty much all there's to it. So again, I'm just putting it back together. Nice size, looks pretty good. Uh, before we do the writing sample, let me just zoom in and try to make the rod in, sorry, other way around, uh, rod in, catch the light a bit so you can actually see it, see those flowers. I think it's really quite nice and that gold dust works pretty well. To me, this is the kind of pen that punches above its weight because I know $300 is not nothing, but for Urushi and rod in work, relatively speaking, that's really not bad. You, 
to think of the the the, the um, yukari not night lines that are too grand um you know you, you're hard pressed to find i would say rod and pens under five hundred dollars if not under a thousand dollars it can be pretty hard and i think this is really nicely done so i'm, I'm really quite impressed by that let me zoom out a little bit uh, and grab some paper so we can see how the pen oops sorry how the pen writes again for me unposted i don't want to scratch up that that lacquer work I will zoom in just a tiny bit for you. We have here the TNZ. I haven't really been able to find a, whoops, sorry, TNZ, uh, a good model name. So I am going to go with Arushi and Rodin. The nib is uh, steel, fine. The ink is Ackermann Delft's Blau, which is a nice washable blue. Uh, and the writing with this pen is really quite nice. It is a fine nib, true to its name, or grade, I should say, kind of what you would expect from a fine nib, but it's smooth. For a fine nib, I find this very smooth, very pleasant. Bit of extra fast writing. No real skips that I could tell. And that's one of the nice things about a good fine nib. Sorry, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Less likely to be over polished than the broad nibs that have a lot of tipping. And as a result, you don't really get a lot of hard starts. It can happen, of course, but in this case, clearly nicely tuned nib. What about wetness? Well, it's not the wettest writer around. This is a drier ink, but I mean, I find it a little dry. Um, I would probably make this a little wetter if this were my pen, which I I guess it is now. Um, anyway, that's that's just me. It certainly writes. You can squeeze out a bit of line variation. It's not advertised as a flex nib in any way, shape, or form, so don't push your luck. But you can add a little bit of character to your writing. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, there is always the reverse writing which in this case is not a great success. As you can tell, um, it runs dry very quickly and you can barely even read that writing. So, fun pen, nice, pretty smooth, interesting rod and work. I think we need to discuss what I like and what I don't like. Let's do that next. What do I like? What do I not like about this pen. I'll start off with dislikes this time <clears throat> because I don't have that many. I discussed this pen with Doug Rathbun. We, we met up in, in Three Hills. You may know his pen review channel as well. He had one. I was awaiting mine. I forgot about it actually. It was weird. I already had one in the mail. Um, and I was like, oh, that's a nice pen. And a couple days later it arrived. Anyway, <clears throat> he said he noticed some tiny gaps in the in the 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 in, in rod and inlays um, that you need a loop to see right so it's not that, that there are visible gaps I have really looked for them I don't really necessarily see any clear gaps on mine but I just wanted to point that out that that might be something in some cases and again only with like a 10 power loop right so it's not don't expect anything you'd see with the naked eye that really is my dislike because i have to be honest i find this a pretty comfortable nice pen it's nicely made i like the shape it looks fairly refined i personally would like a little bit more if it had a rounded top as opposed to the flat top because i don't really like flat top pens but that's very personal the craftsmanship to me looks pretty good the rod and looks nice the gold sort of i always call that gold dust like the gold sprinkles it looks pretty good it's fairly light it's a nice writer comfortable section i don't really know what to say three hundred dollars is not cheap but like i said before relatively speaking that's pretty cheap when it comes to rod and work if pilot would make a pen like this it'd be two thousand dollars guaranteed but it's not a pilot pen it also has a steel nib Steel nibs are cheaper, 
I think a lot of people at this price would expect a gold nib. I don't think that is an unfair demand. Bear in mind that Radon takes a lot of time and effort and skill to do properly. So that drives up the price. This is not something that gets churned out by a machine 500 a day. An artisan, an artist, sorry, has to put all these little pieces of abalone shell in there, there's lacquer on top. It's an involved process and that will cost you something, right? You do have to take that into account. Having said that, <clears throat> I think it's a really nice pen. It's a pleasant writer. It's a fun piece. So I don't know. I really like it. There isn't much else I can say about it. A kind thank you to TNZ for sending me this. I really appreciate it. I hope this was useful and um, I'll gladly see you later. Bye.